All right, welcome to chapter five, section four, polygons and angles, and this is for math eight. Uh, so a couple things you'll see on your screen here. The first thing you should see is a due date. Um, I don't see it on the teacher preview, but you'll see it on your student screen. The second piece here is attempts. So you always have unlimited attempts on homework, tests, and quizzes. So you can come in and try them as many times as you would like. Uh, number of questions, this one in particular for this assignment has four questions. Um, grading policy is always the best score. So whichever attempt is the best one is the one you keep. Partial credits enabled. So if you answer one of four questions correctly, you get credit for the one question or however many you answered correctly. Um, so please remember once you start your homework, you must finish it before you can work on anything else. What that statement means is once I click start on the student screen, down in the bottom right corner here, you will see a submit assignment button. You have to click that button before you leave this screen. So don't just close the screen um, or close your computer. Make sure you click that button. Um, you want to make sure that anything you've been working on, you've typed in and you click check and you have a green check mark up here for it. So it will save your place. As long as you have a green check mark, you do not have to repeat it. Um, if you haven't gone that far, then it's going to have you repeat that. Or if you have a red X, it's going to have you try that again. Um, clicking the submit button does two things. Number one, it stops the system from locking you out of everything. It assumes if you don't click that button, you want this attempt left open and this is what you want to come back to. It won't let you open anything else, so don't do that. Number two, um, it'll actually affect the grade book. So it shows your teacher what you've been working on. Until you click the submit assignment button, it's kind of like it's on pause. So uh, just get in a good habit, always click that button. Um, the other three things we have on the side here, there's explanation. This will explain the exact problem you're looking at, so you're going to lose your question attempt because it's not going to give you the solution and then let you come type it in. Sorry, that's not how this works. Um, example shows you an example of something very similar to what you're looking at and um, shows you exactly kind of how to work that out what to do um, and then you can close this you can open another example if you would like um, you can also message your teacher directly from the screen it won't let me do it because I'm in the teacher preview but for you it'll open up what looks like an email screen and you can send a picture of this assignment right to your teacher and say help I don't know what to do um, so for this one what we want to look at what we've been talking about um, parallel lines that's what we started with in section one um, and then we went to triangles in section three. So section two is a little bit more about proofs using parallel lines. And section three was about triangles. So now we're going to kind of add some of these pieces together and we're going to have polygons and angles. So polygon is many sides. Poly means many, gon means sides. So many sides. Um, so polygons and angles. So in this case, we still have a triangle with kind of extended lines going through it. Um, and what we want to do is we want to figure out what is X. It just says find X. So we need to somehow bring a total down to this piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and do my best really quick. I'm just going to draw this. Um, if you have a picture, that's great. If not, definitely suggest just draw it real quick. It does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be something that we can throw some labels on. We can kind of draw on a little bit here. So there we go. I have my diagram drawn. Again, not perfect, but good enough. So now what I want to do is I want to figure out how do I get these pieces to this X? Um, and so I want to try to kind of focus. How do I get this X maybe closer this way if I could move this angle in? Well, if you remember, vertical angles, and that's any time we have lines crossing. So any time that we see this kind of X, we can go across the vertex and they are congruent. So I can actually bring x in here. That's going to be the same angle. They're both going to be equal to x degrees, whatever x is. Um, so I can bring that guy in here. Um, and then one thing, and I'm kind of doing this, let's see, I'll do it in green. I'm going to focus on this triangle because we just got through a whole section about triangles. And I know the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, and I know that's a very bright green I'm doing there, but they add up to 180 degrees. So if I can figure out all the angles there, I can fill in the missing piece. So now let's focus on this piece here, because this guy up here is going to be 35 and 40 put together. That's one angle put together. That's called angle addition postulate. I can add the two smaller angles to get the larger, larger angle that they create. Um, so I have 
one angle, I have two angles, I need this third angle here. So I have this 114, which is outside, and I can bring this in like this. Um, or I don't want to say bring it in like that. What I um, meant to say was talk about they're on a, a flat line together. So this angle and this angle are on a flat line, meaning that they add up again to 180 degrees. So the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. The angles of a, a line add up to 180 degrees. And we've talked about this in, in previous sections. We actually did a proof on the exterior angle theorem, which 114 here, this is exterior angle of a triangle. Um, so I know that 114 and this mystery angle here, we'll say question mark, adds up to 180 degrees. So if I subtract from 180 degrees, what I already have here, that'll tell me what's left over for this question mark. So instead of question mark, it's 56. So now I have one, two, three angles of a triangle. And these three angles have to add up. 180 again. So that's kind of a, a big theme here in geometry. We have a, a lot of angles that are what we call supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. Um, so that's another word that we may hear in, in these sections is the word supplementary. Um, all right, so let's add these like terms together. So we get 35 plus 40, that is 75 plus 56. 180 so then we get 11 that's 8 9 10 11 12 13 and 180 all right so now we've added our like terms together we just need to get x by itself so I'm going to subtract this 131 to see what is x 131 minus 131 cancels so now I get 7 10 9 4 all right I get 49 and again, I know I'm going a little bit fast through this one. Um, we've already spent a couple sections learning about the triangle angle sum theorem, the exterior angle theorem, linear angles. So these are things that we were learning about in previous sections. If you're still confused about those, I would definitely go back to those, you know, section one and three videos and rewatch them, kind of see how they built up because now we're using them all together. So it's definitely getting a little bit bigger as far as, you know, we need to understand a bit more here. So if you're, if this wasn't 100% clear, as far as, you know, how did I get 180 here? How did I get 180 for the triangle? That has to do with previous theorems that we learned. Um, so we definitely want to go back and make sure that we were focusing on those sections as well. Um, so let's go ahead and click check. Uh oh, what did I add together wrong? Do, 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 do. Now I gotta check my math real quick. So where's my error? Let's see, we have 114 minus 180. Oh, that's what I did. This should have been a six. 66, I don't know why I put 56 there. So this should have been 66 here, 66 here, which means this would have been 41, I believe. So 35 plus 40 plus 66, yep, 41, and then subtract that from 180, so this should be 39. Do mistakes happen to everybody? Of course they do. You just go back and you try again. Sometimes it's easy to identify. Um, you just have to go back and, and check your math. Where did I go wrong? Stuff happens. All right, so now, so this is a little bit more like a polygon, what we would call polygon. It's a, a quadrilateral, meaning that it's four sides. Um, but a polygon just means many sides. So we have 106, 117, and 55. So they want us, again, it just says find the value of x. So one thing we do want to know in here, and I believe they give you this um, in the explanation here, the sum of the measure angle measures of a quadrilateral is 360. So when we had a triangle, so a triangle is 180, but a quadrilateral, and it doesn't matter what shape it is, it could be a square, a rectangle, or a trapezoid like what we see here, is 360. So we just have, we have to make sure we're matching the shape. So I know 
they add up to 360 degrees. So I'm going to add these three together real quick so I know what I'm already using. And 55. All right, so we get, um, let's see, that's 13, 18, 5, 6, 7, and 2. So I have 278. And really quick, just because I messed up on my math on the last one, I want to make sure I didn't add that wrong in my head. 278, perfect. So now, of the 360, I'm using 278. I just added them together instead of writing them out. So if I wrote these out, it would be 106 plus 117 plus 55. But I know they have to add up to 360, so I'm going to subtract the 278 so that I know what is left over of the 360 for my x angle. What do I have left over here? Um, so we have 360 minus 278, and we get, we borrow here, and we get 2, and then we borrow again, we get 15, and we get 8, and then 2 and 2 cancel, so we get 82. So it has to be 82 degrees. So again, this just has to do with quadrilateral. This is actually the first time we're learning this one. So we learned the triangle angle sum theorem um, last section in section 3. Now we're learning the quadrilateral angle sum theorem, um, which just means that they have to add up to 360 degrees. Um, and we can actually kind of think of that, the reason is because they make two triangles. So if I draw a line from one vertice to another, it makes two triangles. And each triangle is 180 degrees. 180 plus 180 is 360. So that's another way to kind of the reasoning behind the 360. All right. So now we're going to get a, this is a formula that we need to, to look at. So if we look at explanation, it will show us the formula here. So if, you, if you're ever on these and you don't know the formula right off the top of your head, because um, you might not know, find the sum of an interior angle measure of a convex 11 gon, which is an 11 sided polygon. Well, number one, there's, there's a lot of terminology in there that you might not just know. So the interior angle measures, it wants us to add up all of the interior angles of a convex. Convex means that it's going like this. There are shapes. This is an, not an 11 sided polygon. This is um, a pentagon. But convex means that it, it, they're all straight lines. But nothing is dipping in. So concave would be something like this, where I can see this. This is almost making a cave. It's caving in. So concave. But convex means that nothing kind of dips in. It's all points that are outside of the, the shape itself. So that's what convex means. Um, so we want this formula here. The following formula gives the sum, which is S, of the measure of the interior angles in degrees. So we have S equals 180 and minus 2. So n is what we want to fill in. So in their example, they have a 15 gone, which is 15 sided. So they don't all have special names like um, triangle and quadrilateral um, or pentagon, things like that. Some of them do have special names, but once we get to a certain point, we just they start referring to them as the number gone, meaning it's that many sides. That's it's just kind of an easy way to refer to them. So we're gonna plug our number in here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this, and we're gonna work out. The, the formula. So S is going to equal 180 times, it's 11 gone, N is the number of sides. So I have 11 sides minus 2. So this is the formula. The only thing that's changed, and I'm going to put it in a different color, is 11. The rest of the formula that's in pink will always be this formula. So we have 180 times 11 minus 2 is 9. That's an 80. So then we have 180 times 9. So let's see, we get 0. We get 72. We get 9 and 16, I believe. Let's see if I multiplied that correctly. Yay! All right. So kind of doing some quick multiplication there. But um, so this is all the interior angles added up. So it's the sum of the interior angles. Not one of them, all 11 added together, are 
1620 degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and do this last guy here. So the sum of the interior angle measures of a convex polygon is 2520 degrees. How many sides does it have? So we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to go backwards. We're not really backwards, but we're given a different amount. Now we're given the sum is 2520, but we're not given the other pieces here. So n minus 2. They're asking us to find n. How many sides does it have? So with this one, I can distribute the 180, or I could divide the whole side by 180 and this whole side by 180. So distributing the 180 would get rid of the parentheses, but I can also do this division here which will also get rid of this piece here. And they do give us a calculator on this one, so we can actually do this on the screen here. So 2520 divided by 180 equals, look at that, it's nice and even. So the only time that that's kind of not the best is when we don't end up with a nice integer like that. Um, we end up with a decimal. Um, I was pretty confident we were going to end up with an integer though. Um, so now, all we have on this side is the n minus 2, so I just have to add 2 and go 16 equals n. Negative 2 plus 2 cancels out. So it was a 16 gone, or 16 sides. Check. Alright, so that was section 4. I will see you in section 5.